Let's talk about the economy. Ghana's inflation has surged to almost a three-decade high. The current rate has moved from 40.4% as of October this year to a whopping 50.3% in November. This is more than four times the rate achieved a year ago. Well, let's uh, get an understanding to what this means and what the implications are. My colleague Isaac Kofia, Jay's data analyst with the Joint News uh, Research Desk, joins us uh, now in studio for the latest on this. And Kofi, mm -hmm. uh, for those who are <laughs> preparing for Christmas, 50.3% is not a figure I'm sure they are working with. So how did we get here in the first place? Let's track the trajectory. Um, the 40% plus was as at the end of October this Absolutely. year, and now we're doing 50.3 plus. So that's Before that's these two, November. where were we raging, and, and what, what's our level of escalation in terms of uh, inflation? So remember, we started the year with an inflation rate hovering around 13.9%. We had just left the single digit zone, and we were approaching mm. the double digits, and we were increasing at an increasing rate. And then we saw it moving from the 13.9, then we, we saw the fourth, the 30s, the, tw the 27s, the 29s, the mm -hmm. 30s, then we went into the 40s, now yeah. we are actually in the 50s. Mm -hmm. The last time we actually had such a high inflation was 1995, when we ended the year with an inflation rate somewhere around 56.9%, if my memory says me right, but it was around 50%. That was the last time we had anything in the 50s. Since then, we've not had any inflation rate with either in the 50s or above 50. For, for someone who's, who, who's, who's on the market right now trying to assess goods and services, um, if you talk about 50%, 50 plus, mm. 40%, 40 plus, uh, I guess there's that question on, on the mind of the average Ghanaian. I mean, what's the likely implication? That, that's the first thing that will that, yeah. come on top of everybody's Exactly. Mind. So, so bless that inflation acts like an invincible tax. Mm -hmm. So if I ask you to pay a tax rate, a tax and the rate is as high as 50.3%, are yeah. you willing to pay? Mm. So inflation, one thing that it's, it affects is your disposable income. Right. So when we were actually doing the computations with 40.4%, uh, we saw that if you are a worker and then let's say um, last year, October or last year, September, you were earning somewhere around 3,000 CDs, your salary is not the same anymore. It's around now 1,888. That was when we were using the 40%. The 40 percent. Now we're, we're moving 50.3%. So by it, some 10 plus exactly. percent. So it means that your salary has now depreciated. It's yeah. a loss value just because of the invincible tax called inflation. So that's the implication. It simply means that, so someone will also say that, you know, if you look at the 50.3% inflation, it doesn't really reflect what we're seeing on the ground because on the ground, you, are, you, you see things, you know, prices going up by more than half or more than 100% and all that. But if you do the breakdown, you realize that there are some of the components or some of the, you know, goods that have inflation higher than the headline inflation. The 50.3% is a headline inflation. Okay. But there are other goods. So, so let's, let's try and break it down. Uh, key issues, key driving factors, and it appears that food is on top of the list. Mm. So last, um, you know, when they released that of October, diesel topped. This, this month as well, November inflation, diesel is still topping. It's just that we've seen petrol moving from number two now to, I think, number three. Then we have granite, which is uh, the shelled granite the, being number two. We have, you know, items like women underwear. Yeah. Women underwear was in the October mm. inflation rate. It was number nine. In terms of the top 20 drivers, it was number nine. And now it's shooting Now it's, it's actually number 12. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it's still in, the, in the top 20s. We were actually expecting it to leave for another, you know, product. Product or, to, or to or just um, take over. Take over. But we've seen it featuring. This is the second time we've, we are seeing women underwear in the inflation, the top 20, you know, commodities driving the inflation. But you ask yourself, it's still, you know, import inflation, which is still high. So for about eight, six consecutive months, we've had imp imported inflation being higher than the local inflation. And even if you look at it on the, you know, the regional breakdown or the regional level, you see regions like the, the central region where food inflation is as high as 70.1%. But in terms of the regional breakdown, it's clear that the eastern region appears to be in the lead now. 
I think uh, is, 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 is that, is the is that flipping region. the narrative? Okay, so that's yeah. the central region. Yeah, in right? terms of food inflation. And then you have regions such as Easting mm -hmm. also joining the fray in terms of the high yeah. rates of inflation. Yeah. What accounts for those disparities that, that we're seeing regionally? So remember that you know, these regions, uh, most of them are more or less like landlocked. They mm -hmm. actually depend on what the goods we have here in yeah. Accra to be transported to these regions. So if you have inflation in Accra being high, it's more or less like the way we import inflation from the U.S. and the U.K. when we import things. There's going to be a regional distribution. Exactly. So if you have people transporting goods from, you know, greater Accra to other hinterlands or other parts okay. of the region, then we find inflation also moving away from the greater region, Accra region to right. regions like that. So what you have on your screens now, except of um, what we're talking about, the, the, the regional... So almost uh, everywhere is yeah. red. Uh, if you see red, it means it's a danger. And... Although the headline figure is 50.3, we have about, you know, out of the 16 regions, more than nine of them have yeah. inflation rates above 60%. So, so, so you just have uh, Upper West, Upper East, mm. uh, I mean, benefiting from, from some of the region, uh, lower yeah. levels of, of inflation. I don't intend to stir controversy, but there's the issue about the figures itself being released by the Ghana Statistical Service. Uh, some other experts are raising concerns about the figures. Is this the time to relook and reassess? Because some say it, we might be having more than that. Well, remember that the Ghana Saskatchewan Service, they have actually done what we call rebasing. So they've actually changed the reference here from 2018 now to 2021. If not for the rebasing they did, probably would have had November's inflation being higher than we, we are seeing. Right. But rebasing is actually good for the economy. Mm. But if you look at some experts like Professor Hang and Co who are saying Ghana's inflation is more than 100% and stuff, we should know that the Ghana Saskatchewan Service, their approach to calculating inflation or consumer price index is somewhat different from what Professor Hang has been using. He's been using the price purity approach, which actually calculates inflation using exchange rates. So for instance, now that the city is gaining value, we expect that the rate that Professor Hanks has been calculated would, would have been depreciated. Exactly. Okay. But the, the Saska service, they use, you know, a weighted average of a basket of goods. That's why we call a headline figure and they go ahead to give us some of the, you know, um, right. um, um, items, the yeah. breakdown, the disaggregation. Okay, then. Uh, Isaac, thank you. Um, Isaac Ophiaji with our uh, Joy News Research Desk data on this, helping us to understand this. Um, I don't intend to stay on the controversy. Let's deal with the figures, 50.3%. At least that's the official one we have with us. Uh, Professor John Gachi is uh, Dean of the University of Cape Coast Business School, joins us via Zoom now. Thank you, sir, for your time. So here we are, 50.3%. And uh, I guess the implication is clear. Uh, but just before I come to you, Prof., I, I, want, I want you to indulge us a bit. Let, let's engage Kofi Kapito, who's Chief Executive for the Consumer Protection Agency. Uh, obviously, uh, he, he will be joining us um, j just to share the concerns of the average Ghanaian out there because they, they are alarmed about, about the figures. But, Prof, let's start off with you. 50.3%. Do you estimate this at the start of the year? Uh, and Prof Professor Kachi, you'd have to unmute so, uh, so I can get the points yeah. you're, you're making. But, but I was just asking if uh, at the start of the year, looking at our economic conditions, uh, you were predicting that we'll get here. No. Hello? I'm with you, sir. So you, you didn't see this coming. So what, what do you feel may be accounting for where we are today? Well, I think they have been spelled out by the Saska service. Hmm. Uh, the, the drivers change from time to time, and sometimes they maintain. And so as we speak now, the drivers have changed a little bit. Housing, water, electricity is driving the inflation of the country. And as you can see, to a large extent, food price inflation is still on the high side. And that is actually indicating to us what we should do to uh, food in general. Uh, we have left uh, effective production of uh, our staple food, if you like, rice, uh, corn, and, and, and others for a long time. And now we need to reverse and uh, shape policy to attract people to uh, engage in production of uh, this. And uh, as this is done, we also need to ensure 
will provide a marketing conduit that will provide a stable marketing conduit for uh, our farmers so that they can uh, continue to engage in that. Uh, so that is what we have seen for uh, some time now. And I need to say this, uh, that many were expecting that once you have the dollar rate uh, depreciating in terms of against the Ghana city, we, we see the currency performing marginally well. You do not necessarily expect that prices of goods and services uh, will be up at this point. Is there, are there some points that we, we need to take no notice of? Yes, you need to take notice of the fact that the inflation figure we are talking about is a past inflation. It's mm. November inflation. Uh, in November, uh, we have not seen the exchange rate performing better. Uh, and that, uh, for that matter, it cannot influence November inflation. Uh, November inflation is influenced by its own factors. Uh, uh, if the exchange rate development we have seen is anything to go by, then that will influence December inflation. So uh, that should not mislead people. Uh, but then uh, what we've seen uh, is that, um, of course, as I was indicating, that the currency appears to be performing marginally well. Looking in that context, are we to say that from next month, at least, uh, there'll be an add-on effect or perhaps we may be dealing with a different figure? It depends on the weight of uh, uh, depreciation in all these cases. So if the weights of uh, depreciation at influence prices, uh, price development in the country is mm. uh, weightier, that would drive down uh, prices. But we do not see inflation going down. We see inflation, maybe the momentum uh, uh, reducing, but uh, inflation will still go up in December, perhaps not the margin of uh, November. Mm. Uh, Professor John Gachi, there's, there's uh, one more issue I'd explore with you later on, which, which would uh, have to do with the market itself, because uh, the Ghana Union of Traders Association is asking their members to try and uh, adjust uh, the prices of goods and services on the market. So it appears that we need to talk about the market itself. Uh, but uh, Kofi Capito is also with us, Chief Executive uh, for the Consumer Protection Agency. You're, you're obviously not happy about... 50.3 plus percent in terms think of it's inflation. Just my office, I think right. the whole Ghana is not happy. Right. Inflation is not a good thing. Uh, inflation sometimes uh, uh, depends on what your country is into. Mm. Uh, places like China. Right. China would intentionally even devalue their money because they are producing country mm. so that people will be able to buy. Right. Unfortunately, we are not. Mm. So it's more like a double, a double one. Right. Uh, what does the consumer do? Uh, your salaries is not going up. Meanwhile, cost of living is off the roof. So it is a hard time for consumers in Ghana. And for CPA, what are the key pointers that we must deal with as a nation? Well, we must deal with number one, uh, which I think it has started. The, the dollar is seeing some uh, stability right, or some yeah. reduction mm -hmm. coming. Uh, for prices uh, is going to go down even further than what it is. Right. Uh, government should look at taxes. Government should look at not using the current exchange rate to calculate duty at the port. That is, that is a killer. Because if I'm going to buy a high dollar yeah. on the market and I come and the duty is also being calculated based on the high dollar exchange you know, in the market, yeah. then uh, the, the trader doesn't have any other choice but yeah. to pass it on to the consumer. Yeah. Uh, so these are these are the areas that I think should should be looked at uh, taxes. Yeah, I, I, and I would want to dwell on the issue of the taxes. Sure. Uh, which of them is paramount to you? Of course, government told us at the time that we're not going to the IMF, so we'll use the e levy as a, some sort of a substitute. Now the IMF is in place, e levy is in place. VAT, of course, is being revised. You see, government needs taxes to be able to run the economy. I agree. But when, t when the taxes are sort of uh, one-sided, mm -hmm. okay, or not being spread all over. Look, let me give you a typical example. Right. Why are we seriously correcting the rare property rates in Ghana? Mm. I mean, do you know how many, uh, now a piece of land, <laughs> even in my village, it's not small money. Right. But we are not doing it. So we are concentrating 
everything on that small number that they, uh, somebody will say the low hanging fruits. They are the ones that we are going after. Manufacturers are complaining because they are visible. The, the, the market women are visible. Guta, everybody who is visible mm. is where the government is going to. I mean, to me, if you ask me, some of these things, it's, it's a lazy man's approach. Mm. I don't understand why a country like Ghana, from Kofor's time, President Kofor's time, we were told to pay what is called toll recovery debt. My brother, as you and I stand, so, number one, I don't know how much the toll debt is. Right. I don't know how much has been collected. And I don't know what the balance and how long is it going to take us mm. for us to finish paying that toll recovery mm. debt. So what? Until I die, my, my son will come and pay. My, my grandson will come and pay. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. These things, it needs to be explained. Because these are some of the challenges that the Ghanaian is going through. If, if, if government... In, it's done in other jurisdictions. Government will sometimes sacrifice taxes, okay, so that it can cushion the people. If people are telling you that VAT is too high, then you turn around and increase it. How do you expect the people to mm. survive? Meanwhile, you have been increased the salaries, even in terms of government-owned oh, business, boy. cutting down on government's own business. We haven't seen anything. VAs are still on the roads, okay? Oh, they, they are not complying with the directive? I, 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 well, they are still there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, executives still fly business and first class tickets. Per diem is, is out of this world. Look, I've, I had opportunity to travel with uh, 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 the Millennium Development uh, the, you know, the MBA, Pact. Yes. Where, when we were doing this uh, electricity thing. Right. We were going to ask them to give us 500 and something million dollars. Per the State Department's rule, no government official flies business class. The Ghanaian officials, two MPP MPs, two NDC MPs, some uh, ECG, VRA people, they were angry. They can't fly from here to India mm. on an economy. Mm -hmm. The white lady who was leading us flew economy. And then you that you are going to beg them to give you money, you are, you are flexing your muscles that you want to be So you feel we need to do with the expenditure. Uh, but then beyond that as well, we know that we also have to look at those who are selling on the markets. And that's a point I'd wanted to bring Professor sure. Gachi in. But before I bring Professor Gachi, I, I want you to also touch on that. Guta has released a statement asking its members and members of the business community to try and adjust their prices as, of course, we're seeing some marginal, uh, uh, I mean, appreciation of the Ghana city. So it appears that those who sell in the markets are part of the problem too. Well, it? they are business people. Okay, just like the, uh, the GPRT people are refusing to reduce mm. transportation. To me, it's not fair because the same reason they gave for the increase yeah. is not in the reverse. So at least I want to see some reduction so that to on, be the, fair. on the uh, transport front. On transport, oh, yeah, right. uh, if petrol is going down, right. I should see some reduction on transport. Right. If the dollar is going down, I should see good people reducing some of. Maybe you see it can even be a feel good attitude. Okay, you know, fine, give and take. And the question is, we need to look at the profit margins in the market. It's only in Ghana that people expect to make 100, 200 percent. In business, as the professor is there, asked him, if you make between 15 to 20 percent, you've made a lot of profit. How many businesses make 15 to 20 percent? In Interesting Ghana? questions you're asking there. Professor Gachi, you, you have to address that for us. Uh, is it the case that Ghanaian entrepreneurs and those who sell in the markets are part of the problem? Well, I think we, <clears throat> until we do a survey to get on that it is not easy to uh, associate uh, that to them uh, wholly. Uh, but I think the statement that was made by Guta, I think what happens is that uh, if you are importer, you are marking uh, what you want to buy from outside against the dollar. So uh, if the dollar is expected to go up or to be high at the time that you'll be importing it is only proper that you sell at a higher price uh, to accommodate that and if uh, now that the dollar is uh, 
uh, performing well against, uh, uh, now that the city is performing well against the dollar, uh, it is only proper by the same approach uh, to revise your price down to reflect uh, that uh, uh, aspect of price development uh, in the market. So I believe the call is in the right direction. And so it is when uh, the dollar misbehaves again and, go, and, and goes. <laughs> uh, do, do you see then, it misbehaving anytime soon? Oh, oh yes, uh, uh, this is just a momentary uh, respite for the city. Uh, we need to do a lot of things uh, as I outlined in the budget. Uh, we need to focus on uh, producing our own uh, uh, staples, rice, poultry, etc. If we are able to produce that, we will lock up uh, a lot of uh, uh, foreign uh, exchange uh, that we use to import those things into the country. So that is one way of the of the, of the challenge. If we are bold enough uh, to be able to enact laws or to revise our laws, uh, to indicate a reinvestment of uh, money generated in the country uh, by foreign companies, a certain portion to be reinvested in the country. By so doing, we will be able to reduce the amount of money that will be repatriated from this country. So a number of actions will have to be taken uh, to give a long-term respite to the, the, the city. Okay, so the final leg of the conversation will be on protecting the consumer. And that's where I want to uh, find out from you what responsibilities really we should be bearing. Because everybody goes to the market, we all buy at some point. Um, how should we be tackling our expenditure this time around in terms of the personal level of, of our economy? Well, I think we need to uh, uh, respect our personal budget. Uh, we don't have to consume things just because we have money. Uh, naturally, when we are in difficulties, uh, we don't expect our budget to be the same, so everybody will have to revise his budget uh, uh, along. And that is the way we can uh, stay uh, uh, above the waters. If not so, uh, things will be very difficult for all of us. Mm. Professor John Gachi, I'm grateful that you've been able to join us uh, here on the Pulse. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yes, obviously. Oh, you have a question for yeah, Prof. Yes, probably. You, could, you, could, you, you could know, by the biggest that problem that we all know, mm. we have a big government. Mm. And nobody seems to be talking that we should have a small government. A country like Ghana, mm. why do we have all these ministers? Deputy, deputy ministers. For what? Chief directors, deputy chief directors, mm. and so many, whatever. We, we, we know what our problem is. Uh, the oh. professors and co, they are all aware. But the question is, if you look even the developed countries mm -hmm. who are doing better than us, look at the way they are. Expenditure. Well, what's your question to Prof? My really? question was, mm -hmm. what, what is, uh, when is academia mm -hmm. going to be bold enough and say this is the way we should go? Instead of somebody talking somewhere, another person talking somewhere, mm -hmm. the issue is, it's a collective thing. We should be a serious country. Like I said, yeah. I don't see why if government promises me that mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've cut their uh, uh, salary by 30%, and nobody can tell me exactly mm. how much was made right. or what that savings was used for. Just somebody talking. It doesn't make any sense. In other jurisdictions, they should be able, they will be able to tell to, you that to we made that. one dollar and this is what we use it for. Prof expenditure wise. I think we have talked about all those things he's saying over and over again. Mm. It's just that the government doesn't listen. Uh, or perhaps the government is looking at uh, the engagement uh, of the people as employment. Uh, so when you push government to <laughs> uh, scale down the numbers, it means that uh, they release a number of people without jobs. So they are finding it difficult to do. But actually, uh, in this time of uh, crisis, we don't need to keep the large size of government that we are having. Mm. Uh, we, need, we, need, we need not to have some ministries that we have there is a need to merge similar ministries uh, to do the work that they do more effectively. We need to cut down on so many secretariats that we have. We need to cut down on so many uh, 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 appointees with uh, uh, support staff uh, from political uh, party arenas, etc. So all those things will have to be cleared uh, for us to have an actual government size that reflects our, uh, our situation. Interesting.
Prof, thank you. Um, Gufi, let's talk about the consumer. Obviously, you are here on behalf of CPA. I'm just wondering if you have any message for Ghanaians out there as well. You know, it was, it, it's very, very inter interesting. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand. They say what I would always find is level. Right. When you push somebody to the wall, they have nowhere to go but to come back through you. So when the consumer is squeezed, he finds other illegal ways. And that is what I'm afraid of. And I don't condone people doing right. illegalities. Uh, we've been talking about Kalabuli. We've been talking about corruption. Right. We've been talking about all this. For how long are we going to keep talking about it that we cannot do any trust, uh, drastic thing to, for people to know that? It's not okay for you to tell me that uh, uh, I should put something under the envelope. And, 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 and it is going on. Because if they don't take that envelope, how are they also going to be able to buy papaya mm. for their kids in December? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so, so as we wrap up, of course, government is obviously inundated with a lot of petitions. What would be that petition from TPA to government? Office? All I'm saying is, if we are all in the soup or we are all in, in it together, let me see you also doing something mm. for me to appreciate it so that I can say, like I'm saying, if you are telling me that I should tighten my belt, which I am doing to the last hole, but you don't even have a belt on. Mm. And then you are telling me to tighten my belt. You see people doing things that they are not supposed to do. The World Cup, we saw some ministers who were there. This is in crisis. Crisis and people are outside enjoying themselves. But I and you, people could not even afford. Now, you know, just yesterday, I was so, and this is where I think the Ghanaian too is wicked. A lady that bakes bread in my neighborhood, she has actually re uh, increased the price and reduced the size at the same time. So I told her, what are you trying to do? If, you have, if you've increased the price, at least maintain the size. Mm. You can reduce the size and increase the price. Yeah. And this is what can, 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 the same thing. Everything, it is reduced and it is increased in price. I think the businessmen have to change their attitude. <laughs> but anyway, Kofi, would have to leave it here. Thank you, Kofi Capito, for joining us uh, here on uh, The Pulse. And as we uh, count down to uh, the last lap uh, of the NDC's National Delegates Congress, we'll bring you an exclusive interview uh, with the youngest contender in this race. I'm talking about Saul, uh, Samuel Yao Eduse. Uh, we'll get to know about the candidate when we return after this break. Please stay.